Good morning, children. Today we continue with our essay titled "A Dissertation on Roast Pig." In the last class, we started with this humorous anecdote, which his friend Thomas Manning seems to have shared with him. So this is an imaginary story in which he reveals the history. Uh, he gives out an imaginary uh, account of this practice of roasting pigs, which started in primitive times with an accidental event which happened in a chinese village so he describes this event hope you remember the story the story of bobo and hoti how they accidentally discovered the uh, the delicious this delicious food that is roasted pig and how the whole village understood the uh, the uh, beauty of roasting pigs and how all followed hoti and bobo hope you remember the story now we move to the second part where so the first part he gives out a historical account of this practice of roasting the pigs now in this session he will be giving out the description of how to roast a pig how to roast a pig or rather how to roast a, a crackling so he begins he says that of all the delicacies in the whole mundus edibilis that is a latin word he consider this to be a crackling to be principus obsonorium principus obsonorium is actually the first food the most delicate food the most pure food so he consider Uh, the roasted pig of all the world of eatables that is considered to be the first food first food is the is something which is considered to be the most delicious one and he says in the next sentence he says that he is not talking about all those grown hawkers all those adult pigs he says that i am actually talking about all those things between pig and hawk something like young and tender suckling tender suckling which is under a moon old so that is just a uh, just less than a month old so he is not talking about all those grown porkers you might have uh, eaten this pork now charles lamb is not talking about that grown adult pig he is talking about that young tender suckling which is less than a month old who is guiltless as yet of the sty so uh, he which is untouched by all those all those dirtiness all those filthiness so if you uh, know this pig you understand that pig lives uh, or pig enjoys being in all those filthy uh, mud ഈ പറയുന്ന മണ്ണില് ചെളിയിൽ കിടന്ന് ഉരുള എന്ന് പറയുന്നതാണ് ഈ പറയുന്ന പിഗ്സിന് ഏറ്റവും ഇഷ്ടപ്പെട്ട വിനോദം അപ്പോൾ അതിനെ കുറിച്ചല്ല ചാൾസ് ലാമ്പ് പറയുന്നത് ചാൾസ് ലാമ്പ് ഹിസ് ഈസ് ദാറ്റ് ഹി ഇസ് നോട്ട് ടോക്കിംഗ് അബൌട്ട് ഓൾ ദോസ് ഗ്രോൺ ഫോക്കസ് ഹി ഇസ് ടോക്കിംഗ് അബൌട്ട് ഓൾ ദോസ് ഹോബിൾ ദ ഹോയ്സ് ഹോബിൾ ദ ഹോയ്സ് ഇസ് ഓൾ ദോസ് യങ് ഓക്വേർഡ് ലുക്കിംഗ് ബട്ട് യങ് പിഗ്സ് വിച്ച് ഇസ് ബിറ്റ്വീൻ ബിറ്റ്വീൻ pig and pork and which is untouched by all those filthiness with no original speck of amor immor immunity to amor immunity to it is another word another latin word which means the love for filthiness love for filthiness that is you see that is what you see in all those pigs and he says that that is something like a hereditary failing of the first parent something the first parent of the pigs might have committed just like our adam and eve their hereditary failing was they disobeyed the uh, our god so that kind of failing failure might have happened to this first parent of these pigs that is why they love filthiness and he says that and then he describes this young pig their voice their voice is not yet broken 
so you have this broken voice so if you consider human beings when you uh, in a man these boys suddenly they have this broken voice when they become adult and then later they get this mature voice if you know a boy you will understand ഒരു ആൺകുട്ടി ചെറിയ ഇതിലുള്ള ഒരു പത്ത് പന്ത്രണ്ട് വയസ്സാകുമ്പോൾ സഡൻലി ദേ വോയ്സ് ഗെറ്റ് ബ്രോക്കൺ ആൻഡ് ദെൻ ലേറ്റർ ദേ ഗെറ്റ് ദിസ് മെച്ചുവർ വോയ്സ് സോ ഹിയർ ഹി ടോക്സ് അബൌട്ട് ദ വോയ്സ് ഓഫ് ദീസ് പിഗ്സ് ഹി ടോക്സ് അബൌട്ട് ഓൾ ദോസ് യങ് പിഗ്സ് ഹൂസ് വോയ്സ് ഇസ് നോട്ട് യെറ്റ് ബ്രോക്കൺ ആൻഡ് ഇറ്റ് ഷുഡ് ബി സംതിങ് ബിറ്റ്വീൻ അ ചൈൽഡിഷ് ട്രെബിൾ ആൻഡ് എ ഗ്രാമ്പിൾ സംതിങ് ലൈക്ക് ദ മൈൽഡ് for runner or preludium preludium is prelude something which comes before a grunt so usually all these pigs grunt he talks about all those voices with, with which is between treble and grumble the voice which is not broken so he is talking about a really young pig which is less than a month old and what does he want he says that he must be roasted so that is something which is very cruel from a delicate soul like charles lamb you will not imagine a delicate person like charles lamb uh, giving out a cruel description of roasting a young pig we will be surprised to hear these words from a, a very delicate person very caring person like charles lamb so this is is another phase and please remember he is giving out a kind of a humorous description he is uh, moving into an area which he is not familiar of as i said earlier his usually his uh, his essays were a kind of a blend between pathos and uh, humor here he completely uh, moves into this realm of humor alone and he succeeds in it he gives out a kind of he uh, makes this audience or the readers get a boisterous laugh so here he talks about this young pig which must be roasted and he says i am not ignorant that our ancestors ate them seethed or boiled but what a sacrifice of the exterior tegument so he says that i know that our ancestors you used to eat the these uh, crackling or young pigs but they either seeth or boiled so these are the different version of boiling seeth is to boil while boil is to heat up to the point where uh, where it becomes it turns it turns into something like a dark brown color so here he says that our ancestors used to do that but but it resulted in the damage of the exterior tegument the outer skin of this young pigs so he says that it is the most tasty thing in this whole meat of this young pig the exterior uh, skin if you have eaten pork you will understand it has this uh, one layer full of fat and then comes the meat and when it comes to the case of young pig pigs the exterior skin or the fat is more uh, like he says that he compares it to something like a cream something like a wind essence wind essence so he says that that flavor is not at all comparable he says that that crisp tawny well washed not over roasted crackling so it is something like a pleasure he says that the very teeth are invited to the share of the pleasure at this banquet so our teeth gets that immense uh, indulges in that immense pleasure of biting that that uh, heavenly food 
he says that it is something like coy brittle resistance coy brittle resistance with this adhesive oleaginous adhesive oleaginous is that oily fat that sticky oil when you roast that young pig so it is crisp tawny and well washed over roasted pigs over roasted crackling it is something like a heavenly food and he says that don't call it a fat or oh, call it not fat but something like an indefinable sweetness something like tender blossoming of that of that fat fat which is cropped in the bud so he compares it uh, to a flower which is plucked before uh, before it blossom and he says that yeah. it is something like fat cropped in bud taken in the shoot in the first innocence which is devoid of all those vices which might have which might uh, enter this body when it is grown up so he consider it to be the cream and quintessence quintessence of this child pigs yet pure food and he says that the lean no lean but a kind of animal so look at the description he gives out all those minute details he says that don't call it fat it is not fat don't call it lean it is not lean so he is going to all those minutest details fat and lean it is something like blended fat and lean blended together running into each other and the result is something like an ambrosian what is the word ambrosian mean if you are if you were in trivandrum you know this one of the famous bakeries in trivandrum it is ambrosia ambrosia is something like heavenly food so when uh, it becomes when you take this young pig which is fat and lean at the same time the result is ambrosian you are you feel like you are tasting this heavenly food and now he talks about uh, this roasting process he says that behold him while he is doing that is you must be careful when you roast the pig and you must take him while he is doing doing is being the process of roasting behold him while he is doing and it is something like a refreshing warmth and in that scorching heat he looks so passive so please remember he is talking about this act of roasting pig and how this pig is being roasted and how equably he twirled round the string so he is being uh, as you know uh, in the process of roasting you take this uh, pig or the chicken നിങ്ങൾ ചിക്കനും കണ്ടിട്ടുണ്ടാവും ഈ പറയുന്ന ഒരു ഒരു അയൺ റോഡിൽ കൂടിയാണ് അതിൻ്റെ ഈ പറയുന്ന ഹോൾ ബോഡി ഇൻഡസ് ടു ദ ഇൻ ദിസ് അയൺ റോഡ് ആൻഡ് ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് ബീങ് കെപ്റ്റ് അണ്ടർ ദി ഡയറക്റ്റ് ഹീറ്റ് സോ ഹി ഹി ആക്ച്വലി അഡ്മയർസ് ദ ബ്യൂട്ടി ഓഫ് ദിസ് സീൻ ഓഫ് ദിസ് യങ് പിഗ് ബീങ് റോസ്റ്റഡ് ഹൗ ഇക്വാബ്ലി ഹി ട്വൽത്ത് റൗണ്ട് ദ സ്ട്രിങ് so how beautiful it is to see this pig twirling around that string where this pig is being roasted and it is i would say this line is the most cruelest line in this essay where he talks about his this young pig's eyes wept out we can see the young pig's eyes Uh, in that scorching heat it comes out and he compares it to radiant jellies or shooting stars so how beautiful is that to see this young pig weeping out his pretty eyes those radiant jellies how beautiful is that 
uh, that scene. So, as I said earlier, this is unlikely uh, to come from a, a person like Charles Lamb. But please remember, he is talking about, he is giving out a different version of himself. And then he says, so after this roasting process, when he comes in the dish, when this young pig comes in the dish, it is, he compares uh, this dish to be the second cradle of this young pig. The second cradle of this young pig. And how meek the, he lieth, how submissive this young pig, the roasted pig, a roasted crackling lie there in that dish. So this is something uh, like a cradle for this young pig. And he says that he actually saved this young pig growing which might have grown to become oh, all those rough indocile creature that is a adult pig. It might have proved uh, he might have become a glutton. Glutton is actually a greed, a slow one, a lazy creature, an obstinate, disagreeable animal. So he says that I actually saved him. I saved him being uh, from being this kind of a, uh, a kind of a disagreeable animal. It might have grown up to be very gross, indocile, and he would have proved a glutton. A slow one, an obstinate, disagreeable animal. So he says these lines, he quotes from a poem. He says that a sin could blight or sorrow fade. Death came with timely care. Before, er is before, before sin could reach this young pig, which might have become this, uh, this obstinate creature. Sin, before sin could reach this young pig or sorrow, fade that innocence. Death came at the right time, giving out that timely care. Came with the timely care. So, he says that he actually saved these young pigs growing up to that indocile creatures to become swines, to become adult pigs. And he says that his memory is odoriferous. Odoriferous is sweet smelling. Even the memory of that roasted pigs. It is sweet smelling. We get the smell of that, uh, that food. So he says that even the memory is so sweet smelling. And he says that uh, all those young, uh, adult pigs, they even uh, all those, uh, he says that no clown cursed while his stomach half reject the rank bacon. So all those adult uh, adult pigs. So eating that adult pig. It is something which our stomach will reject. Even the clowns. Even all those coal heavers. Coal miners. So all those coal heavers. There are, uh, these are people who do, does a lot of hard work. Our, uh, according to Charles Lamb, our in the Italian thing, you the Lalkaran. Angina Lalkarke, Patiana in the Iparina, pork, adult pigs and orino. But this young pig or crackling, he had a fair sepulchre in the grateful stomach of this judicious epicure. He says that he has. A fair, a fair sepulchre. The young pigs or those cracklings have a, a great sepulchre. Sepulchre is actually a tomb. Where is this tomb? Tomb of these young pigs is the stomach of this judicious epicure. A man who uh, has this aesthetic sense. A person who eats judiciously, who loves food. So he is comparing um, this, uh, this two types of people. Like he says that like call heavers, call miners, clown. They eat for the sake of, of 
of eating food adayad adu they never enjoy eating uh, eating delicious food they need only food to um, uh, fulfill their hunger but here young pigs or those crackling is meant for that judicious epicure epicure is a person who is in love with something so uh, so for those people this young pigs are meant it provides their stomach provides a fair sepulcher so that is the right tomb their stomach is the right tomb for all these young crackling and now so he, he says that for such a tomb might be content to die athre nalla kallare ulla aalkarku endondu marichu kuda they will be so happy to die ningal onnu enna aalichu nokku nalla enikku nalla oru kallare undo nu yarichu i am so happy that i have a uh, great sepulcher waiting for me so that is actually very ridiculous to say so he says that and then he continues he gives out a comparison between pineapple and this crackling roasted pig i don't know uh, how uh, how how uh, strange is that comparison he compares uh, the taste of pineapple with this um, taste of roasted pig and he says that even pineapple is the best of sapers the best food he can say and he says that it is uh, it is delight a delight to eat those pineapple because it is too ravishing for mortal taste it is something very uh, ravishing is some something like exceptional beauty to taste this uh, this pineapple it is something like i should say something like uh, a mortal taste ravishing for a mortal taste and then he talks about the uh, bad side of eating or the not so good side of eating this pineapple you might have eaten a pineapple and you might have gone through this experience too that eating too much of uh, this pineapple too much of pineapple you uh, after uh, uh, some time your lips started uh, lips will start getting uh, getting some kind of itching it is he says that it is like lovers kisses she bite the pineapple will bite your lips it will wound your lips it will cause pain in your lips when you eat too much of pineapple so it is something like pleasure bordering on pain which comes from the fierceness and insanity of her relish fierceness it has this uh, pungent taste kore kalichu kelmeyku namakku ee parayna naaku allengil chundu edakke onnu aa or itching varan saadhyamunnu when you eat this pineapple so he says that it is good to eat a pineapple it is it is also the uh, great and it is something like transcendent a delight and a really a tender conscious person would do well to pose but a uh, a person who thinks might pose because he might know that she wound and excruciate the lips that approach her like lovers kisses she bite she is something like a pleasure bordering on pain it gives pleasure but something like there is a tinge of pain which comes from the pungent or the fierceness and insanity of this pineapple and along with that he says that she sh- stopped at the palate at the mouth the middle not with the appetite so the taste of pineapple ends with your mouth it will not it will not enter into your appetite it will not satisfy your appetite the taste will end at your mouth and the coarsest hunger might barter her consistently for a mutton chop so he says that 
even a mutton chop would be better than a pineapple when it is considered as food uh, food he says that it is much better that you barter you exchange a pineapple with a mutton chop and he says that so he makes a comparison and then he comes to the conclusion he says that i have great praise for this pig because it is no less provocative of the appetite and he is satisfactory to the criticalness of this sens sensoriousness sensorious palate so it is satisfactory to the criticalness of the sensorious palate so it will never uh, create any problem in your appetite and along with that it will satisfy the critical judgment of even the sensorious sensorious is uh, a person who is hypercritical or over critical endu kandalum kutte parayna aalkar undallo avarku vare ee parayna pig ennu parayunnathu avare avare mouth allengil palate allengil appetite endinayum satisfy cheyyum ellade vaay adapikkunna tharam ruchi aanu ee parayna crackling and he says that he compares and then he compares it it the taste of this uh, this uh, young pig with the nature of mankind he says that unlike to mankind's mixed characters in in human beings we see mixed characters we have all those vices and virtues we are bad and good at the same time we are something like a gray characters but when you compare it with this young crackling young crackling is good throughout from the beginning till the end when you eat this uh, so that is also a strange comparison eating a pig is compared to uh, the nature of human beings he says that unlike to mankind's mixed characters which is a kind man kind is a bundle of virtues and vices which is something like intertwisted you can see all those virtues and vices in all individuals oral nanmeyada pradheega oral thinmeyada pradheega ennu parayna cinema il kaanana pole ennu alla manushan manushan there are all grey characters but here the young pigs they are good throughout from the beginning till the end no part of him is better or worse than another he help as far as his little means extend all round so he help us all round it is satis it satisfies our hunger it uh, gives pleasure to our mouth it uh, is something like uh, a tasting some uh, uh, a heavenly food so it even satisfy the most critical person and he ends that comparison he says that he is least envious of banquets he is all neighbors fair so he says that when it is served on a table when it is there and on a table served for all those people no one can complain that his neighbor has taken a better portion than which has fallen into his share that usually happens when we go to the wedding right നമ്മൾ വെഡിങ്ങിൽ ഒക്കെ പോകുമ്പോൾ നമ്മൾ നമ്മളുടെ പ്ലേറ്റിൽ നോക്കുമ്പോൾ ഏറ്റവും ആ ആ ഇതിലുണ്ടാവുന്ന ഡിഷിലുണ്ടാവുന്ന ചിലപ്പോൾ മിക്കവാറും ഈ പറയുന്ന ചിക്കൻ്റെ നെക്ക് ഭാഗം നെക്ക് പോർഷൻസ് ആയിരിക്കും നമുക്ക് കിട്ടുന്നത് ആൻഡ് വെൻ യു ലുക്ക് അറ്റ് ദി അതർ പേഴ്സൺസ് പ്ലേറ്റ് ഹി വിൽ ഹാവ് ദ ദ മോസ്റ്റ് ജ്യൂസിയസ്റ്റ് ഓഫ് ദോസ് ചിക്കൻ പാർട്സ് സോ that will not happen in the case of pig according to charles lamb he says that it is least envious he is least envious of banquets banquets le adine aarum asuye pidilla karyam everyone will get uh, uh, the best portion because every portion every part of his body is equally good so here ends this a description of how to roast a pig and how to eat a pig and how better how it is uh, consider how uh, he thinks this is the best of all of all mundus edibles of all those world of eatables so i'm stopping here my dear girls hope it is clear please go through the text thank you and have a nice day